For centuries in Kenya, lions and Maasai have been locked in an ancient dance. Lions see cattle as prey. Warriors see lions as their ultimate adversary. But this dance can't go on. Lion, one of Africa's most iconic big cats. Admired, feared, and loved worldwide. They seem invincible. But wild lions are in trouble. Experts predict they may be gone from Kenya by 2030. 50 years ago, Kenya had 30,000 lions. Today, there are less than 2,000. Every year, 100 more lions disappear, but nowhere are they vanishing faster than in the land of the Maasai. Elikin and Selin K are Maasai land lions. They're both well-known cattle killers and like outlaws on the most wanted list of the Maasai. They're lucky to be alive their sister was speared a month ago. Elikin and Selin K are collared research lions, part of a group being studied by scientists trying to find ways to protect them. They live on the Maasai group ranch called Imberikani, just north of Mount Kilimanjaro. For the semi-nomadic Maasai that live here, livestock is the primary means of survival. They live inside thorn-fenced enclosures called bomas designed to keep predators out. Almost 10,000 Maasai live on Imberikani, and each year they lose hundreds of their animals to the lions. Kenya just suffered its worst drought in two decades. The huge loss of wild game and cattle has left both predator and man hungry and desperate. 26-year-old Joseph Katoke is a Maasai warrior, but he's also a conservationist. Most of the Warriors hit lions. I myself, I love them very much. Joseph works as a Americani group ranch game scout. And when he's not taking care of his cattle, he spends his days protecting wildlife. Today, like many others lately, Joseph has been called in to mediate. He normally wears his game scout uniform but in this case, decides on plain clothes to keep warriors from turning on him. Big female, but there are two lions. Big female and the other male cub, really big one too. The lions broke into the boma last night. And wreaked havoc amongst the goats, leaving three dead or mortally wounded. So you, see, you can see some marks here. There's a fight between the first goat and the lion. So you can see how they were fighting. They take, try to take the goat down. The warriors woke to the cries of their terrified animals and chased the lions away. It was really, really badly injured. So the neck was is broken. So it automatically died. Last month on Mbarikani, warriors speared two lionesses for similar attacks. They're ready to hunt again. Elikan and Selen K are likely suspects, but since they've had cubs, they're staying away from Maasai livestock. Tummies are empty. 
Are the sisters back at cattle killing again? Joseph appeals to the owner of the Boma, reminding him killing the lions is a permanent loss to the Maasai. And if his warriors don't seek revenge, he will be reimbursed. The Predator Compensation Fund gives partial reimbursement as long as the Maasai don't kill the lions. The owner agrees for now, but... They're saying that this night, if they decide, if the lions come back, we are going to kill them. Joseph is caught in the middle. He must relate to his fellow warriors, while at the same time, keep the few lions left alive. Merikani is a Maasai-owned communal ranch, and still an unfenced wilderness. The Maasai traditionally don't hunt for meat or eat wild game. But warriors live to prove their bravery by hunting lions. Lion hunting is an exact art. They must prepare themselves emotionally and physically. The warrior who spears the lion first is admired for life and becomes famous for bravery. He's given a new name, a lion name. But only about 20 lions remain on Americani. Nimoy, another collared lioness, lives inside an impenetrable whistling thorn forest. She isn't a known cattle killer, but she struggled to raise her four-month-old cubs through the drought. She's already lost one, possibly by starvation. As Nimoy tries to find food for her cubs, a new threat to the lions is being born. Lomanyak, 17, and Langkoi, 15, are going to be circumcised tomorrow at dawn. After circumcision, they will belong to the same warrior generation as their friends and be bonded like blood brothers for life. A new warrior generation is created about every 15 years. As the brothers mentally prepare for their ordeal, their mother shaves their heads. <laughs> their new age mates will stay with them through the night.
The circumciser is a trained male nurse from the local clinic. He uses a sterilized scalpel to continue an ancient practice, until recently, done with an old blade. The brothers have made it through their public circumcision. They've passed the first test of warriorhood. A week later, Lomagnac and Lankoy are well enough to sit outside with their father and dream. <laughs> Following circumcision, new warriors wear traditional initiate black for three months and carry bows and arrows. Not far away, the lions are at it again. They mauled two donkeys and killed one. The warriors are furious. Joseph does his best to calm them down. The research team has also arrived. Kylie McWalter works with Living with Lions, the scientists monitoring the collared lions. She's followed the tracks, and Elikin and Selen K are not responsible. The lions that did this are two half-grown cubs. Okay, so they've agreed that they won't kill the lions um, if we can find them and KWS come and take them away. We've got a couple of days to find them. This rain isn't helping at all. <laughs> the two 14-month-old cubs responsible for both Boma attacks are orphans. Their mother was speared two weeks ago. You know, we are very suspicious they can be killed at any time. And already, you know, we lost their mother just two weeks ago. Yeah. And again, we um, might end up losing again the two cubs who just been left surviving alone. They are right now orphans. Joseph thinks the cubs will be hunted, and he's noticed that the main lion hunters are nowhere to be seen. Ask me in Turkey or someone who can give us any information. Mm. He suggests to his commander that they quietly follow up on the missing warriors. <laughs> Kylie has just a few days to find the orphan cubs and relocate them to safer land. And it will be like finding two needles in a haystack. Living with Lions researcher Kylie McWalter has only a few days to rescue the orphaned lion cubs, or the warriors may hunt them. But there are thousands of acres to search, and the cubs are not collared. Her fellow lion scientist Stephanie Dolrenry and her Maasai assistant are looking for Elikin and Selin Kay. Collars are a tool for conservation. Particularly with the lion guardians on the ground, they're able to know where those lions are and they can track and they can say, okay, we know that a cow was killed over in one area and Marans might be going hunting over in that area, but our collared animals are all in another area. They should be safe. So it becomes a tool. It becomes a way of saving these lions. 
They find Elikin and Selin K, the two veteran cattle killers, in a shady spot near water, and unfortunately, several Maasai bomas. Hopefully, they won't be tempted. The researchers have learned that these persecuted lions live like fugitives, alone or in small groups, which is unnatural for these big social cats. Lions usually live in prides, with an average of 10 or more animals in many places in Africa. The scientists are trying to find ways to help the lions and the Maasai coexist. which may give these four cubs a fighting chance at survival. Joseph goes back to the donkey boma to find out what his age mate warriors are doing. Hello. Eh? Hey. Hello, hey, Papa. Hey. 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 So they had gone hunting, but by the time they got close enough to throw their spears, the orphan cubs split up and ran into the thick bush. That's when they gave up. Some lost interest and others were afraid of getting into trouble. But there's one warrior here Joseph is concerned about. Renowned lion hunter Sane Pune has killed 12 lions. He's also Joseph's childhood friend and warrior brother. Joseph reminds him that lion hunting is illegal and the importance of conservation. <laughs> Finally recovered from their circumcision, the two brothers Lomanyak and Langkoy face another test on their way to becoming warriors. In this phase of initiation, they must hunt birds. It's difficult to knock a bird out with a blunt handmade arrow. <laughs> They're looking forward to hunting lions next. Meanwhile, on the other side of Mbarakani, Tom Hill, the co-founder of the Predator Compensation Fund, is preparing to meet with local Maasai elders and chiefs. Business principles have a great deal to do with addressing actually other businessmen's problems. And the Maasai livestock owner is also a businessman. So let's talk about economics and let's solve 
the problems from an economic point of view. Tong was brought into the fight to save the lions by an old friend. Richard Bonham, a Kenyan, has lived on Imbaracani for almost three decades. He started an eco-tourism lodge and has since brought conservation to the area. Today, he oversees a growing team of game scouts. And then he reached the stage where I could see the lion population was virtually extinct in the area. And so I, I went to the elders and said, what, what are we going to do here? You know, we've got to stop it. And they said, well, the only way you're going to stop it is paying us for the livestock that are killed by the predators. Tom and the elders have now come together to brainstorm how to prevent more lion killings. Since the Predator Compensation Fund was founded, very few lions were killed on Mbarakani. But after the drought, everyone panicked. And that's what I think the chief is about to tell us, his thought. 17 lions have been killed in the greater area surrounding Mbarakani in the last five months. And him and the, the other guy said that, mm. you know, the politics is going on, lions are being killed, but mm. we are not going to stop talking mm. to the initiates to stop lion killing. Mm. So we have to keep moving and make sure that we have to stop it. These elders in charge of training the new warriors are called Menyalayok, which means fathers of the warriors. They teach hunting and fighting skills, training warriors to protect their people's livestock. But things are now happening on Mbarakani. For the first time, warrior traditions must change. They're setting up a series of training sessions for the new warriors. Lion hunting will no longer be tolerated. Kylie McWalter and her research assistant are still searching for the two orphan cubs. They only have two days left. The warriors admitted to Joseph that they tracked them yesterday, but aborted their hunt after the cubs split up. Without collars, the cubs are hard to track. We eventually found tracks of one cub and followed the tracks all the way to the river and then lost the tracks again. So we've come up here now to look for the tracks of the second cub. We've had no luck so far, so things are not looking good. The cubs will be hungry again soon. They may be too young to survive on their own and will probably break into another boma. Next day, Joseph is sent to investigate a different kind of lion disaster off in Barakani. Poison here. Yeah. And it's very, very, very bad poison. These lions attacked a boma two nights in a row and killed two cows. The owner of the boma, an elder, was asked by authorities not to retaliate, but he only had three cows remaining and panicked. I'm going to say that we have lost the whole pride around here, so it's a very sad case. Have to talk to the community, try, try to talk to them to stop this because this will never, if we still do this, no more lions or no more predators in our country or in Africa. Poison takes the guilty and the innocent. We have lost five uh, lions in total out of the incident. The community member used this, this particular bucket here. They, they, they drew the blood in the bucket. They mixed it with the deadly poison, that is the ferredin. And at night, in our absence, they, 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 they placed this one at a, a site where the lions could access uh, this bucket. 
The poison furidan, made in America, banned there, but imported to Africa, is tasteless and odorless and meant as a crop pesticide. It's so toxic, even the flies are dying. Any scavenger that eats the dead lions will also die. Kenya Wildlife Service burns the carcasses to prevent further damage. Poisoning is fast becoming one of the largest threats to predators in Kenya. That night, Joseph is called into the Game Scout headquarters. A sting operation is underway to arrest a lion hunter, an informer told Kenya Wildlife Service that Sane Pune went after the two orphan cubs this afternoon and speared one. Uh, but basically, the, the, the cub is already injured. So what the plan right now on the ground is KWS to team up with our team, <laughs> that is the mobile one, which yeah. is right down yeah. there at Kwesu, yeah. to team up this night and track this guy. Uh, because already we are made to understand that he, some of the informer knows exactly where he is. Mm -hmm. So... The notorious lion hunter? Yeah. Because I think he's not even aware that we are aware that he's the one who have speared the lion. Or yeah. we, we we know that the lion has been speared. Yeah. So there's high possibility of getting him yeah. because he must be just on the ground. Joseph wants Sane Pune to be caught, even though this puts him in an awkward position. He's among of my best friends in Berikani Group Ranch and also in my age set. He's done have speared the lion that the two cubs that they're still the mom has been killed the last two weeks. And up to now, according to the report we have heard is that the lion has been speared badly and also badly injured. Just told everyone and I just told my the my office and the whole security team that if Saine Pune is there, we'll automatically lose the lion and this is what happened right today. Nimoy has had some success. She's managed to ambush an ostrich. Ostrich are plentiful after the drought, but killing one on her own is an achievement. They're fast and agile and can deliver a surprising lethal front kick. Somewhere in Mbarikani, the Kenya Wildlife Service are holding Sane Pune in custody. Nimoy is oblivious to the drama playing out on her behalf and on behalf of all lions in Maasai land. If her success continues, it may be the turning point for Nimoy and her two remaining cubs. Out on the plains, Joseph gets away from the stress of his job as a game scout and joins his fellow age mates for a wedding ceremony. Everyone knows that Sane Pune was arrested last night and that Joseph played a role in it. The Kenya Wildlife Service is questioning the lion hunter right now. Some of the warriors are angry with Sane Pune for being caught. Others think Joseph is a traitor. Joseph wants this to be a warning to his age mates. But his heart continues to walk the fire.
For more than 400 years, the Maasai have kept their culture intact. At its core is the lion-warrior love-hate relationship. Most songs and legends are about lions and warriors. If lion hunting goes from Maasai culture, what can replace it? And what else will go next? The next morning, in the whistling thorn forest, Nimoy watches the vultures come in, attracted to her ostrich kill. Lions all generally appear to be the same across Africa, but new genetic evidence is starting to emerge. Prides sampled in East, West, and South Africa all seem genetically distinct, and there is concern that lions from different areas probably don't interbreed. This means, to preserve the Maasai land bloodline, Nimoy and her small family are becoming even more precious as a gene pool. Lamanyak and Lang Khoi are on their way to the first initiate training meeting, usually held under a tree, but today in a donated community church. The Menya Layok, or Fathers of the Warriors, have arrived. Joseph is here to help. This is a historic day. It's the first time the new warrior lessons will be taught. Lamanyak and Lang Khoi have never been to an indoor meeting and don't know what to expect. One of the fathers introduces today's program. They're going to watch a training film in Ma language called We Don't Kill Lions Anymore. Lang Khoi has never seen a film before. This film was made by Richard Bonham and Tom Hill's fund to help teach communities about predator compensation. It's a starting point, explaining to the new warriors that with compensation, there's no need to kill lions anymore. For two future warriors who dream of lion hunting, the message is loud and clear. Back at their home, the despondent brothers tell their father about their first initiate meeting. His sons won't be experiencing the kind of warriorhood he remembers. How can they be warriors without hunting lions? Can they possibly define themselves as men? There are still many more Menyalayok meetings to come.
First light reveals Elikin and Selenkei's nighttime exploits. And this time, the researchers can sigh in relief. The veteran cattle thieves have also killed an ostrich. And as long as they don't return to livestock, there is hope for their future. Lions are specialist hunters, and once they've successfully killed, they will continue to improve the technique. Kenya's lions are more than iconic symbols that bring tourist dollars to help support the economy. As top predators, their role in the ecosystem is vital. If they go extinct, everything else suffers, from the environment to the economic sustainability of the land. Sanepune, the notorious lion hunter, has been released by the Kenya Wildlife Service. There wasn't enough evidence to prosecute him. But there's still been no sign of the cubs, and Joseph decides to visit the lion hunter to see how he's doing. As angry as Joseph is, he's still Sanepune's warrior brother, and this will never change. Sanepune is glad to see Joseph and feels comfortable enough to tell his side of the story. Sane Pune started hunting and soon found fresh tracks of the cubs to follow. He carefully approached the shade tree and took aim. Sane Pune is known for never missing his mark. He says his spear went through the cub and hit earth. It had blood and mud on its tip. He followed the injured cub for a while and then decided to find some other warriors to help him. But no one would agree. That night, he was arrested. <laughs> Joseph reminds his age mate that he's already killed 12 lions, and in Maasai culture, killing more than nine is bad luck. He begs Sanepune to now stop. From what Sanepune claimed, Joseph believes the cubs are probably dead. 
Joseph knows that Sane Pune won't change. He's a traditional Maasai, but he only has a few years left of warriorhood. Sane Pune's father killed nine lions. Sane Pune grew up believing he must do the same. He finds this changing new world he lives in confusing and difficult to adapt to. He's a dying breed of warrior that may soon become part of Maasai legends. Several weeks have passed and the next Menyalayok meeting is today. Only a few initiates have shown up. The new warriors are sullen. So far, they've been told what they can't do, kill lions anymore. Tom Hill and Richard Bonham are here to support this grassroots initiative. Let me make it very clear that the ideas that you're hearing here today and the projects and the activities, the benefits that you will realize in the future um, are not coming from our ideas, but are coming, in fact, from your own people. The modern warrior education includes Maasai tradition, but introduces conservation, healthcare, and education. The fathers try to make the new lessons sound appealing. So when you, talk of, when you talk of women, even if you kill the how many lions and somebody has a degree and has a good job, you can't compete with him, with him for lady. But the main event today is sports, something that can replace lion hunting. The idea is to organize teams between warrior groups and have regular competitions. Winners are awarded status and prizes. Lamanyak takes his turn at spear throwing, a skill all warriors love, and comes in second. His frown turns into a smile. The day is a success, and next time more will attend. There are close to a thousand new warriors on Mberikani alone. This story is only beginning for these teenagers, and the future is unknown. But as they continue their training, perhaps some will become different kinds of lion warriors. Research assistants that work with scientists, safari guides, and of course, game scouts, following in the footsteps of Joseph. The same evening, the males of Mberikani are back. Both research lions are on patrol visiting their females. Shore and Manuele are among the few carriers of the Maasai land lion genetic profile. And as their great paws strut across these plains, they are the link to its survival. The two orphan cubs have reappeared. They survived Sanepune's spear and have not attacked more Bomas. Somehow, they're learning to survive on their own. It's going to be up to the new warriors and the elders leading them to find the solutions. But for now, Lamanyak and Langkoi are just trying to cope with the new things they're learning. <laughs> In a few months, the two brothers can paint their faces with red ochre as they join their age mates for more warrior training that will go on for the next few years as they become full-fledged Maasai warriors.